Hello and welcome guys. We are trying to do, which is going to be more of a track guide of the Nurburgring, um, because I feel a review can be done quite quickly. I feel this is the best Nordschleife version we have to date in any of sim racing. AC1 was already good, but of course it's outdated. And I feel this brings it to a kind of new level. I feel there's more detail in the road. There's more bumps. It is super tricky to drive, but at the same time, it's also super rewarding if you get it right. Um, it ha probably has the best environment, best looking environment. Uh, when you go through there on high graphic settings, it's just outright insane. So we're not going to do the review because this this is the one, okay? We'll, we're not have a better version, I'd say. Um, so let's go into the track and, and really make it about what is actually different here. So we can skip most of the GP track, um, except for turn one. And the only difference we really have here for turn one is that the we, we carry a bit more speed on the main strain because we're coming from the Nordschleife. So we have a longer run on the strain. We're a couple of kilometers up, so almost hitting 260 here. Whereas we normally, I think we have like 250. So the breaking point is going to be a tiny bit earlier, which means when we previously um, used the 100 meter board. We're not going to use that now. There is more, well, wherever you want to look, but there is an exit road coming here from the left. And I guess the start of the exit road serves as a good break marker for you because, again, we carry a little more speed. The other thing is we probably want to stay a tiny bit tighter in turn one. So let's go there because we have to change transition right after again really quickly for the left hand. It's probably best to view it in cockpit. And what I want you to focus on is just the transition from turning right to turning left. The car is really slow. The car sits really high with the right height limitations of 70 millimeters, which is the lowest compared to 50 that we have normally, which makes the car a little sluggish. Uh, sluggish. So you as a driver have to be more aggressive. So I just want you to look at the steering and the transition from right to left. And that should be your major takeaway for the corner. Right, you see, I'm just really aggressive there. Bit of sliding with TC off, um, which is in the end of the day is going to be a bit faster. But for most of you, this should not be any concern. This is only when you go for the super fast esports times in the low eight minute four, three, two, whatever they can manage. Um, so this is your takeaway. You break a tiny bit earlier for turn one, take it a bit tighter to open up the left hander, transition really aggressively into the left hander because the car is. Um, sluggish sits very high and you need to force it around. Then we can already skip quite a few corners actually, because the other thing that changes is the chicane. Because now they've added a new curb, new higher curb, which is harder to pass. So we also have to break a tiny bit earlier. Maybe before it was the 50 board, maybe it's now the 55, 60 meter mark, something like that. But you'll better see it if we roll forward into the corner here. And now we're just going to quickly pause and have a look where this curb actually is, this new one. And if we go close, then you can see this one is really high and disturbing and not even the car sitting at 70 millimeter can safely clear it. So you're best off not taking it at all. The difference is that before or previously on the, on the GP track, we will still be able to use whatever is on the left side here, the several plates stacked upon one another. Um, but now the chicane is a bit tighter, so we need to go a tiny bit slower, turn in a tiny bit later. That is the major thing you want to consider here on entry. The more interesting part is if we go for the exit of the turn, where now we have the problem that we're going to be on the left side here, going wide, and we need to be on the other side. So again, like in turn one, two, we have to be super aggressive with the transition here. So if you look from probably this perspective might serve it best. We are going to swerve across to the right in a very aggressive fashion and then straighten up the car aggressively. Just the moment we are straight, we're going to be straight with the steering wheel for a brief moment in time as well. And this is when we can hit the brakes aggressively with all four tires kind of equally loaded, or at least the left and the right equally loaded. And automatically, when you do the transition really as aggressive as you can, this automatically also kind of becomes your breaking point, right? So as soon as you make it over to the other side, this is also your breaking marker. Because seriously, if we zoom out a bit, there is nothing else to really see here. This white line is certainly too early, so we can't really use that. 
So it's a bit of a time feeling. And as soon as you start doing the chicane there consistently, then I think you will start getting the breaking point for the actual entry onto the notch life array. Now, what's there to know about this corner? And there's probably something about this corner that we'll see repetitive or repeatedly across the track, which is that there's a bit of banking, a little uphill. And what uphill usually means is that the car will keep slowing down as you go into the corner. So if we just kind of take a look at the speed I'm carrying, the brake is going to be away now. The speed just keeps decreasing, decreasing, because now we're going uphill. The other problem is, and we'll see this better if we zoom out a tiny bit, we're coming across the hill here and then the track flattens. So pretty much here is when we've climbed the height and then we the car is going to get loose just as we kind of enter the actual notch life, which makes your rear end very, very loose, which is why you'll also see me kind of respect that a bit in my throttle pedal input here. Just have to wait for the car to settle again coming over this crest before I can commit to the throttle aggressively. Um, which usually means we'll be sliding here if the TC is off. So again, for most of you, probably it's fine to just drive with the TC on. Okay, we're, we're talking tens over the course of the full lap here, which is for most of you not going to be a concern. And with the TC off, you're much more likely to crash on this track, which is your number one priority. Then we are looking for the next breaking point. I'll try to make this quickly here. We are going to take a bit of a swerve here, just widen the entry a bit and what we are looking out for just roll forward a bit there's the wall and then you can see where both white lines cross or where they become one and this in the cockpit is going to be kind of my marker i know we can't see it right now but as i approach that i know i will like roll it backward and you can see it a little better just look at where those lines kind of come together this is my marker for the corner Shift down a second, and then we'll talk about where we place the apex in the next second, which is kind of really nicely done. And it's quite easy for you to aim for that, where you want to be the most inside in that corner is where kind of the white line goes away from the inside curve. So this should be easy as a rough reference where you want to be the tightest in the corner, and then the white line goes back to the curb, which tells you, well, we don't want to be there anymore. Then we should have sorted that. Now stay a bit tight, then we go wide again because we want to have that entry into the corner. You can already see it as we approach it here, I think. So I'll play it just one more time really quickly um, and we'll make it slowly. What I want you to look out for is that here is a bump, okay? There is a bump. You could see it probably once, once we roll the replay forward that there's just going to be some or a lot of bumpiness here. And if you go too wide and if you try your turn in just over that bump, then the car might not respond. So you have to learn all these bumps on the track as well, because they do affect if you're making a corner or not. This corner here could be flat if you get the turn in right and if you go to the inside early enough. And that is actually a bit of a, yeah, kind of, Weird thing, we'll have that more often on the Nordschleife. Often on the outside, there's just not enough grip. Uh, for some reason, in um, this track version, we don't have a too pronounced ideal line, right? So we can't re really rely on where the grip is visually. We have to find that, which is probably what a lot of you are still kind of struggling with right now. Um, but if you, in this corner, kind of turn in what feels too early, uh, too early, then you're most likely to find the grip in this one, right? So turning into here, and then sometimes you can just help yourself get the car further to the inside by doing a bit of a short shift, shifting in that corner, just gives the car a tiny bit of a pause where the front might get some extra bite. And then um, you'll kind of be able to force the car to the inside and stay there. Also, a good note here for the Nordschleife is that Kuno seems to have reduced the kind of bumpiness of the grass. So in quite a few places, you can just run onto the grass without really jumping around as we're used to on many of the other tracks. So don't be too afraid when you cut across the grass here. Um, in, in a lot of places, it's going to be fine. I'll tell you if it's not. Then we try to go wide again. And where's the brake marker here? It is for me... Maybe something for you at the back of your head. Do not copy the pros one-on-one. So I'll say this here. This is where I am breaking. This is where the pros are going to break. 
you probably for yourself just want to add a couple meters extra for breaking because it's yeah most likely going to be a bit of a risky thing if you're a hyper aggressive like the pros and if you make the tiniest mistakes well then you're suddenly out of room so add a bit of margin to whenever pro tells you where to kind of break add margin tiny bit a meter can't be enough for some people it might be five or something but five meters at high speeds is well less than a tenth usually so these these very tiny adjustments can already help you so if i tell you my braking marker is the beginning of the curb then you use that as well but you break a tiny bit earlier right maybe kind of add the amount of time you need to blink and then break that tiny bit earlier so we'll slow down and you can see already the, this corner is heavily banked, uh, it, which is going to push us a little to the inside. And then as we go through the left hander, you can see there is a bump in the middle where we want to have the car in as much of a neutral straight state as possible, which means we want to go straight. We don't want to be aggressive on the brake. Maybe we even give a little bit of stabilizing throttle. We want to be neutral in the steering and, and then just go over this um, little crest here and then we fall into the right hander which again has the banking into the other direction and all these things you really need to be aware of and take into account when you're driving through these corners so over the crest and then yeah kind of as the car falls into the bagging this is when we can commit to the steering in the bmw one of the most planted cars i'd say in in these conditions on this track um, it's really stable um, you can be really aggressive um, you definitely want to be on that right side curb here a lot. And you can see where the slowest speed in the corner actually is, right? We're slowing down pretty much through the entire corner. Bit of a moment here because I was really aggressive. And then the other bit is you can go wide, but then you get trouble in the next corner. So your target is through that right hander to somewhat stay middle of the track to get a good swing into the left hander here. This curb on the left, do not touch. Um, it is going to cause issues, you'll bottom out, you'll lose control of the car, and um, even if you're not crashing, you just lose control where you're placing the car. So just stay away from that, aim for a late apex for this one. Again, we're going through a bank and coming over a crest, the car is going to get light here, which means we have to take a tiny bit of care knowing that the car has some vulnerability coming over it, and the grip is only going to return once the car settles, maybe a couple tenths after going over the crest. Turn through the right here, grab all the curb you can. You can even touch the grass there if we if we go a little behind the car. Um, you can just go take that curb here head on right away. Even if you go through the sand, it's not going to upset the car too much. Also, the angle that you're having the curb is usually not an issue, at least for the BMW. It wasn't for the other cars. So I guess this one is um, fine. Attack that right hander. It opens up the left. The next problem, and this track is full of problems <laughs> that we need to solve, is we again have kind of a crest in the middle of these two turns. And most cars at that speed, they will kind of jump, bump into this crest in the middle of these two corners, which is again a situation where you want to have as neutral steering as possible, let the car bounce, land, and then you commit to the left-hander where we just want to use a little bit of the curve. You can't climb it entirely. It's going to be too bouncy. Take a bit of it. And then there's, I'd say the, the kind of slowest point in the corner is also in the middle. On the exit here, don't be afraid to take that curb as well, but make sure you're leaving the curb before the grass starts because that thing here called me, uh, caught, me, caught me out uh, a few times already where the rear just kind of digs into it and then you spin to the left and will be very tricky situation. Same thing as we had in the kind of GP chicane, we want to transition over to the right quite quickly and aggressively, straighten the car up and then just as we're on the left side pretty much, that's already the time we want to break. Maybe there's a little more marker if we just look where the ideal line kind of becomes a bit more dark. If you can see that, depends a bit on the graphic settings if that's going to be a viable option for you. But where the track or the ideal line gets darker, a couple of meters into that could be the braking marker. And then there's a bit of rolling into that corner, really. Very low trail braking. Back onto the power quickly because that curb pulls the front end to the inside. You easily get oversteer over that curb and want to be careful with the throttle here. Stabilize the car a bit. And you can kind of go wide 
and the left hander is opening up so you don't really have to prepare it so line wise in this corner we are not really doing a compromise right a compromise would be we kind of stay in the middle of the track open up the left hander but there's no need to do that the left hander is so wide opens up so much we can just go take speed here go all the way to the curb and we'll easily manage the left hander afterwards let's move forward quickly to what uh well i'm not i'm not familiar yet with all corner names just uh let's just face the reality here um, but this is the Flugplatz, or, well, airfield probably in English, which in some of the cars can be flat. Uh, depends on the setup. If you go really aggressive, this is. It's going to cause trouble elsewhere, I guess, for all the setups I did for the other cars. Audi, Porsche, there's going to be a bit of a lift. Thankfully, we are not jumping over this one here. And now there's still some time to turn in. Same as with... Um, the section, which the, I think it's Hatzenbach earlier, where I said you need to do a kind of the early turn in to find the grippy line. If you turn in late here, the front is not going to bite. So just directly aim for the first curb there, go there flat out. And only once you are getting towards the curb, only once you've done the turn in, you can see I'm doing a bit of throttle management there, just a tiny bit of a lip to, sh uh, to make sure to get the car really to the inside because that's where the grip is and you'll exponentially feel the car biting more the further to the inside you get and then just roll through the first area towards the first apex even and then you can already floor it the car should be sorted by now and be able to pull all the way through flat out also don't be scared of the exit here the grass is not as bumpy there's no problem if you put one or two tires into the grass just be aware it is less grip but it's not going to kind of send the car flying then we go really fast to what is going to be the new fastest corner well i think in, in all of acc um and i already forgot the name again so maybe the comment section can go bonkers with that i think i'll just prepare a map and also if you go to popo meta um you will see all corner names uh, for all the different sections so you can uh, learn from that this one is going to be flat in a lot of cars some cars won't be able to so in many cars just turn into the corner flat and once the front end bites you'll lift the throttle again just a tiny bit don't do a full lift you will die do a 20 30 50 percent lift something like that just to kind of give the car um, a bit of room to take the corner but do not lift completely the bmw here is fine to actually take a flat it's going to kind of start over on the steering. It's going to kind of move a bit around in that corner. Don't be scared of that. It's going to, it's going to be fine most of the time, end of the day. And then the braking marker really is just the end of the curb on the left here. This is when we need to slam it in the BMW approaching it with almost 280. Some other cars that might need to lift just do 275 or 270. They can maybe break a tiny bit later. Uh, Porsche, I guess, was just slightly after the end of the curb. Tiny bit of a difference, not too much, but just use the end of the curb in most cars, I guess, as a start. Then for this very long corner, we can, well, okay, I thought I had fast forward, but that was the actual speed. Let's slow it down a bit. We just roll into that one and keep trailing, 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 very deep into the corner. It's a long one. And then you can mostly due to the banking, floor the throttle quite aggressively, quite early, go a bit over the curb, and then under this bridge is actually the end of the first sector. You'll get the first sector time, which should be 247, 248 on a really, really good lap. I guess slower for the majority of you. Then we go down on towards the Fuchsröhre, which is the compression. And then is one of the most tricky sections of the circuit ahead. All this here is flat. We gravitate towards the outside. This shield here on the shield, this sub sign. On the right there what is actually on there oh warns motorcyclists that they are likely to crash well i can tell you this is true for cars as well and this is the marker pretty much and just after we pass the board or yeah i mean it kind of feels like it's disappearing from you but um you're already preparing for the corner so that board kind of tells you um well it a literal warning but this is also the place and time where you just hit the brake ever so slightly shift down a gear perhaps and then you're already back on throttle stabilizing the car 
right? We're coming at high speed over the crest, take all the curb, that's no problem. And um, now an issue, because I'm using the shadow that we're just passing as a breaking marker, and I don't really see <clears throat> anything else. Maybe you can take this big tree. Maybe you can take this detail in the fence where there's a triangle supporting um, the beam. That could be your markers for, for breaking. But for me right now, at 11 a.m. at least, the shadow does a good job as a marker to, to slam the brakes. And then we are already moving on to the right-hander in which we're going to trail. Just roll the car into it. We can go wide here, no problem. And then the braking marker or the reference point is just kind of those zebra stripes there. Um, just that we actually hit the brake a tiny bit earlier. So let's see where I do it. I'm kind of looking at that and well, when they are about to hit the dash, tiny bit earlier maybe. If we look from above, we are still a good two, three car length away from the zebra stripe. But maybe it's just where kind of the end of this small straight here in between, right? There's cornering, then it's straight from here to here. And I guess just where this straight stops being a straight again and the radius starts for the left-hander, that could also work good as a braking marker. Now, the kind of tricky stuff here is that you want to let the car run wide a bit. Not too wide, I think, because you're not getting the turn in again. Try to stay tight through this. Open up the right-hander afterwards. Important, right? So don't go wide through this one. Stay tight. Stay very tight. Be patient. Don't go kind of across the middle of the track, pretty much, as a rough reference. Widen your entry for this one. Aim for a late apex. And then we are going for the next session. Again, I can't go into too much depth here, but because we'll never finish the track guide and I've been challenged to do it in under an hour. I'm not too sure we're actually going to manage. Very interesting section here. We cannot do the next corner flat out, but we also in most cars will not need to break. A little bit of just coasting, rolling into it is going to be fine. And then once we're in the corner, we actually want to be on the throttle to avoid getting a risky kind of oversteer moment because the, the curb on the inside, if you hit it, it kind of pulls the car in, gives you an over rotation. It's going to be quite the moment with oversteer. And you, of course, we want to avoid that. So make sure you slow down early enough so you can be on throttle in the turn, which is hopefully what I'm doing here. Just a bit of a lift and then manage the throttle. So you always have a car that can be somewhat um, stable through here. Make sure there's no curve on the exit. Well, this one, well, there somewhat is. The problem with this one is it's actually way too short. The car is still at an angle, still going towards the outside. So when we actually need the curb, there's grass. So make sure you, you take a bit of caution there. Maybe don't go as aggressive as I did here on, on this hot lap. Then there is a good way to find the braking marker for this one, actually, um, which is a few... Well, you can see it end of curb and then the idea line gets darker a bit. Wait, we have to get out of the car here, really. Well, it's tough to see here. Maybe we see it from above a tiny bit better. Yeah, right. Somewhat, right? That's what I said. The idea line is not as pronounced as on the other track, but end of curb. There's a bit of idea line starting. I don't know if the compression of the video is going to take that away. But yeah, a couple meters into the darker stuff is going to work just about right as a braking marker, or you just use the end of a curb plus a blink of an eye. In the case of the BMW, we're going down to third, and we want to stay kind of tight in this corner. I'm not sure I manage it. Every lap is still a bit different here. Don't clip the curb, ideally. And then the right-hander is opening up again, so we don't really have to do a big compromise here. We can go wide in the left-hander, whatever I said five seconds ago. And then we pull the car over to the right. It should be fine. It's close here with a white line, but more often than not, it's going to be fine to do that corner. Again, where's the marker for this one? There are two signs on the left. And maybe this is a good place where we can talk about kind of the, the grand scheme of things of that track, where it's easier to learn if you think in kind of repetitive sections. So what we're getting here is a bit of a chicane and then into a slow turn. And we are getting these kind of slow turns at least a second time, which kind of follows the, the same pattern of how you have to drive them. The only thing you have to remember is that we're starting with the slow one, and then we're going to have the same corner again later on the track, just a faster one. 
but we'll get there. And this happens with two other parts of the track, I think, as well. So let's see. Then, which makes it easier to remember, the brake marker here pretty much, again, is the kind of warning board there where if once motorcyclists, they will die. Same is true for the cars. But this kind of serves for me as a braking marker. I'm behaving towards it, but I think being actually on the brake is going to be quite a bit earlier. There you go. I'm hitting the pedal just before that board kind of is threatening to leave my field of view. So that works. And if we zoom out where I hit the brake, it's pretty much actually the first board. Right, so there's always a bit of a perspective thing as to what you're focusing on, what you're using as a reference, and where you're actually breaking. So yeah, that's the reference board, but where we're breaking is the board that we've just passed. Then, um, for this corner, you can kind of aim middle of the track, right? We don't aim for the first curb, we don't want to stay wide for too long, we aim middle of the track, kind of. And then we go for the apex in the second half of the corner here for a single late apex. If we watch that from above, the line then is pretty much coming around here. Just one late apex. That's the target what we're doing here. When you're driving, it can be quite difficult to assess what you've done there. So I encourage you to go to popometer.io where you are going to have a free notch life a pack if you just sign up that's it you just sign up gonna get a free data pack and um, then you will be able to compare of course it's not always going to be the same car but uh you you get the idea hopefully and then you can compare your lines your inputs your breaker markers all that for free okay deal go and check it out then now we have done this this first of a section that's going to repeat later but we have a bit of a thing in between now swerve over to the right important fast swing to the left be aggressive with the steering okay being aggressive with the steering is important if you give the car too much time it's going to understeer out of the corner throw the car to the inside here be aggressive use the banking don't be too afraid of the curb don't hit it too much you can just just about clip it. it's going to be fine and the compression is going to pull the car around so massively, there is no issue not taking this flat. There shouldn't be a problem making the corner, okay? Depends on the setup, of course, how aggressive you actually are in the steering. Sometimes, if you feel you need to lift, if the speed is too high, don't lift fully. Lift halfway to stay alive, okay? We want to just stop the car from being forced too much around from needing too much grip if you lift a tiny bit it's mostly going to be fine but if you lift completely you're gonna lose the rear end then gravitate towards left now this one is really interesting again we could have a marker on the left but your eyes are already pinned to the right so it's kind of difficult to kind of that's supposed to be an eye but i'm a well that's absolutely not an eye is that an eye can i paint an eye well, this is a better eye, okay? Your eye is actually going to look for the corner already. So using the edge of the curb there as a brake mark is probably an issue. If anything, we can, we can roll it back a little. And here, maybe, you can make up your mind. This is where the curb is coming. But now you should start focusing really on to where the track is going. And just kind of keep this in the back of your mind. And then there's going to be just down a gear, not too harsh braking. We don't need to lose a lot of speed for this one. And make sure you kind of go really close to the first apex here. We, we want to almost hit that. And then we hit the second one, which is going to be, yeah, kind of, if you hit the first one, it's very unlikely you'll be too tight for the second one, just of how the, the corner is shaped and how the speed develops. You can see this first, oh, let's move here. This first right-hander is a much wider corner than the second one. So when you clip the first one here, it's kind of a late apex. And then you just keep rolling. The car will automatically lose the amount of speed you need to lose to be slow enough for that second right-hander. And then if we look at the third curb, that is already a wider corner again. So the slowest point in the corner, the tightest point in the corner, is going to be somewhere here on that second apex. And once you clip that, and even you see, I'm already full throttle. When you know you're making that second apex, then you can floor the throttle and the car will easily stay on the track here. Now we're again going to look for a braking point. And there's various options here. There's a board on the left 
Um, but for me personally, it just seems there is a dark patch in the middle of the road somewhere here. And when, when you're driving, you definitely see that. So let me let me roll it back a tiny bit and go for full speed just so you can see the uh, braking marker fly towards you. But the board is just equally fine and probably the more reliable option. But there, there's the dark patch that I'm using kind of for the brake and then it is going to be super aggressive initially, but the more we approach the corner, the more we have to ease off the brake because the ABS will just be overwhelmed a tiny bit and we want to stay in charge of the car, be able to place it. And if you're committed to the brake 100%, then you'll probably not be able to steer the car. You're just going to kind of understeer in whatever direction, but you won't be able to place it. So again, when I tell you this is my braking marker, you add a couple meters extra and you'll be fine then this one super interesting corner i think they call it versiphon versiphon i don't even know what what a translation would be it's something with soap in the end which kind of makes sense because it's slippery um and then we break through that first apex here and the interesting part is we kind of do a double apex in this left hander here so let's view it from above and you can see ah okay this is probably a perspective that should be helpful with you the first one is definitely not as tight as the second one. So the line we're going to do is kind of we break through this here. We go a bit wide here. We have a turn in here, have a second Apex there. Probably want to think just Laguna Seca turn one. I'd say so, right? And the main pattern here that I want you to remember when we talk about the next section is that we're coming from a straight, we have a right king through which we're kind of breaking, then comes a tight left-hander and then a right-hander again. The same thing is going to repeat just in the next corner at a higher speed. So again, we kind of have whenever things mirror, whenever things repeat on this track, the, the first one seems to be the slow one. So this one is the slow pattern of breaking through a right hander into a left, followed by a fl almost flat right. But we'll get there in a second. So break through the first apex, go a bit wide, be slow there come through a second apex but already accelerate through that second apex so slow down slow down slow down slowest point throttle through the second apex and then usually the right hander here opens up so much we don't have to worry about track limits on the exit here now what i mean is again we're coming on a straight we're doing a flat out right hander and we're going to just break again for a kind of left double left that is slowing down and so like the for me this is like the corner before just um, a bit faster, if you will. The breaking point is again, end of that curb there. Maybe when I'm in the cockpit, it feels like I'm just breaking a tiny bit after the end of the curb. But as we've seen before, when we look from the outside, it's probably just exactly the end of the curb here, down two gears in the case of the BMW. And we are trailing the brakes towards pretty much the apex of the first one here. And then it is already time to put the power down again. Don't use the curve on the exit here. I think if you don't have enough time to bring the car back to the inside. So we don't really want to go too wide. Maybe just towards the curb, maybe even tighter is better. The grip is a bit sketchy here. Uh, the car gets quite loose. And then quickly bring it back over to the left. And then it is from perception, okay? We have just how you find the breaking point for this one. What I do is kind of this is all corner, 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 corner. Then the corner stops and that is the end of the curb. And my braking marker is the middle of that. OK, the middle of this small straight patch. That is your marker. I don't see anything else, really. There's a white flag on the right, but I don't know. It doesn't really work well for me personally. So let's go back a tiny bit just so you can see what I mean with that short straight. Let's go forward, coming around the corner. And you see pretty much from here, it is going to be straight. And this is where the curb ends and the middle of that, that is going to be my brake marker. So this is how I deduct that, right? Go through the corner straight from here, end of curb there. Middle of that is going to be my braking marker. We have a visitor. Hello. Don't shift here, just a bit of braking. And then this is one of the weirdest corners, most tricky corners on the track. We want to zoom out here just a tiny bit to get an idea. First thing, it's going uphill and then it's going even more uphill. So it's super, 
a very, very steep elevation, which means it slows the car down, which means we want to enter the corner faster than we feel comfortable doing because the car is going to lose so much speed through this corner, which is also why we barely need to brake for it. It's all crazy on this track. Um, and then the very important things, do not clip the curb, very dangerous. And when you go on throttle here, you're barely not going to accelerate. Then we come over a crest where the car is going to be light. So by that point in time, we want to have the majority of rotation done because once you come over the crest, you will not be able to rotate the car. It's very easy to lose the grip here. So if we zoom out once more, just have a look from here, right? You see the banking, it pulls you in, still pulling you into the corner. You can go onto the throttle and then we're coming over this crest here where the banking stops and the car kind of becomes light. And this is the point in time where you have to have a lot of the rotation done because the front end or not, the front end is not going to bite. Then when it does again, the rear end loses grip. So we are not in a position where the car is able to corner a lot. So make sure you have somewhat of a late apex there and the car's almost straight for that um, well, exit. Now we have a tiny bit of time. But though, even if you're not getting this exit right, don't worry, the straight after this is not too long. And now we're going into the section that is kind of a repetition of an earlier section. So again, a very aggressive turn into the left here. There's plenty of grip for this one. Pin it to the left quickly again. And then my brake marker is, well now made it too far. My brake marker is this Yokohama board on the right. But again, if we slow it down, we'll probably see them breaking a tiny bit earlier than that. That is going to be the brake marker. And why I say this is a repeat section, but faster, is that it again has this late apex um, where the second part of the corner is kind of becoming narrower, right? So this is something we've seen earlier, just now that it's a tiny bit faster than the first time we went through this section. But so you can do it exactly the same way, just in a gear higher, essentially. And you again, just going to stay somewhat middle of the track into this turn. Then you're coming to the inside here, right? This is your apex. And then you'll have a good amount of exit speed here with a straight exit, not a lot of rotation needed anymore, right? If we just, that corner is what, 100 degrees or something, we want to have 90 degrees done of that by, by the end here and only a couple degrees left um, going onto the straight. If you're in the cockpit, there is another good kind of marker in that corner where we're going into this. And you'll see the curb shift changing at some point. We're going to go wide here. And then when you see kind of this edge of the curb there where it seems like it's becoming tighter afterwards is where you kind of want to have that apex just passing that edge here. And then our Apex should be right after that, which is also when the exit curb kind of comes into the frame. I believe I actually lost some time here on that lap. Yeah, that is costly. Try not to do this because well, it does look nice, but it's definitely going to cost you time coming. We're kind of sliding off the curb here into the grass. The car bounces, stops accelerating, and you're going to lose a lot of time this time around because now we have a long straight ahead of us. So make sure this exit needs to be picture perfect. Okay, this is your most important exit on the entire track because any speed you're lacking here is still going to lag for the entirety of this straight. In case of the BMW, we're actually not shifting up to six because we're going to be too low in the RPMs. So we're staying in fifth. And now this is what they call the Mood Kurve, Mood, Mood Kurve or Daring Corner, or I think it's also Nikki Lauda. Too many names. Um, that's just um, a particularly fast one. Let's call it like that. You could think that you want to turn it from the curb, but I think that would actually be too early. So you'd have to turn it from the grass, um, which is, yeah, well, doesn't really help us. So maybe don't go onto the curb in the first place. The turn is just you know, kind of a tiny bit later than, than we you would like to. Um, just when the grass starts, kind of after that, by a fraction of a second, is going to be your turn in. And you can see in terms of the BMW, I'm just going to lift off the throttle a tiny bit here. Probably even fully. Um, aiming for the inside curb here. And as soon as I do fully back onto the power, that is probably going to be enough 
Yeah, and then a bit of modulation because I'm seeing I'm making the exit there, but you need to carry a lot of speed. This is going extremely uphill here, okay? We have a car with north of 500 horsepower and we are barely building any speed here, which means we are going really, really steep uphill. So every kilometer you can carry through this left-hander is going to be very valuable. The next one, easy flat. Brake marker for the next section, which ends with a, a carousel. Um, I guess best marker is beginning of the curb. You can be pretty aggressive here. Then the next thing you're going to have is where's the grip actually in that corner. And I've seen people kind of stay to the left here, you get a wide turn in. Well, there's actually no grip. So you can kind of just go straight for that first epic here, overshoot it a bit, go a bit wide in the middle of the turn, just a tiny bit and then come back to the inside corner a second time, but the corner widens anyway. So the, the line is a bit of a, I think this is probably the only time I'm gonna tell you there is going to be an early apex. And from that point onwards, you're gonna go wider and wider and wider. Very rare case, rarely seen on, on a lot of tracks. So this is probably the, I think the first time on the channel I mentioned that. So break hard through a first apex and then slightly after you're going to be the slowest when feet in the throttle keep the car tight but no need for an actual second apex now the carousel very interesting corner my brake marker is pretty much kind of this ch uh, chalk line there on the right before the end of the curb this is what i use as a reference should be there at day at night should work all the time and then Actually, don't try to kind of take a wide swing or anything. Just break kind of straight into the carousel. And you can send it quite a bit. And um, I don't know how it is with all the cars. Maybe the mid-engines are a bit more um, sensitive to that. Rather, rather hit the inside here than ever putting one of your tires outside of the carousel. Because there's... Minus 500% grip. You're just going to go straight. It's not turning at all. You lose one or two seconds easily if you're not staying in the banking. So make sure your like your biggest concern in this one, stay in the banking, whatever the cost. And if you clip the inside here, that, that's fine. Okay, the car is going to feel weird, but it's ultimately going to go through the corner. So just stay tight here. Keep, keep patience, okay? A um, bit of throttle in there just to kind of keep the car on, on the radius there. And then really only when you see the exit, like right now, I can see it. This is when you can floor the throttle, even with TC off in the BMW here, the compression kind of has enough grip on the rear tires. And then we're going over the crest, no issue whatsoever. Next corner is really interesting. The first of both uh, is going to be just flat. And then the second one is kind of similar, but a gear lower. Kind of missed it here. I haven't quite figured it out yet. And we kind of have this, this type of corner we saw earlier on the track as well. Just a tiny bit slower, not as steep uphill. And also the right-hander last time around open up. This time the right-hander is going to be a bit tighter. So whatever speed we carry through the left here, we have to take a bit more care in the right-hander, right? So the difference you see for me is almost 20 kilometers difference that the right-hander is slower than the left. Um, also because there's banking, we're going uphill, we're still losing speed, and then we're coming over a crest, the car gets light here. Another problem. So we need to make sure we have low enough speed to kind of cope with the sudden loss of speed pretty much that we're going to experience coming over the crest. Uh, you can climb that curb here on the exit, and you can also turn in from it if your setup allows that. Next corner is going to be a tiny bit slower. And whatever corner you see up next year, I, I don't know the name. This is going to repeat again later on the track in a faster kind of iteration of it, a faster version of it. So this one is the slow one. Keep it tight. BMW has third gear and we kind of try to stay tight all the way. So just turn in, wait a bit, power down. Next left-hander, usually not a problem, can be taken flat and also the right-hander afterwards can be taken flat just make sure you're aggressive with the steering really throw the car into this and then right once that corner ends we're going to build somewhat of a straight between these two corners where we're going to hit the brake there and just yeah somehow stay towards the inside it's a bit of a very interesting one here because 
the the curb is kind of misleading in that way here you can go to the left you can use a bit of curb but suddenly the curb gets wider and usable so we just want to stay on the inside here so we can go even further to the inside once the track and curb allows us to do which then opens up the right hander which can for the most part i guess be taken flat well that was a tiny bit of a lift Good curb on the exit there, just make sure you come off it quickly again enough. And then now this is, yes, a very interesting one. And we have the same pattern here again that we have a lot of times on the notch life is that we're going uphill into a corner with a bit of banking, followed by a crest that is going to spit us out. Um, break marker here for me is again, yeah, kind of end of the curb. You'll adjust towards that. And we're going to carry much more speed into the corner than the corner actually allows because we're losing so much speed as we climb the hill here, right? So, right, I was almost already off the brake there and braking a bit more now still, but we're losing so much speed climbing here that the car will automatically kind of adjust to the radius of the car just by climbing uphill and losing 10 15 20 kilometers just from that without anything you need to do um bit of a late apex is the target here and then we come over the crest the car is getting super light we're completely blind here all we see is kind of treetops and the car will go light we need to be neutral in the steering not much steering allowed here but luckily somebody already thought of that and put a curb on the exit here you can't see it but you'll feel and hear it and then same as in the GP chicane, we need to transition very aggressively over to the right again to get somewhat of a turn in for the left-hander. So be sure to make that aggressively. And then again, we have a Yokohama board helping us as rough um, brake marker. It also comes with a name, which is Eschbach. So now we finally know a corner. Maybe fly around, read all those names. I think all the Yokohama boards have a name on them. Just, it makes it so much more valuable to talk with your teammates about where you are, what you're doing, where the car works, where it doesn't, where you made a mistake, if you know the name. But yeah, um, thanks for the notch life of being way too long and having way too German names. Anyway, that's the marker. We break, let's see how much actually. Hard initially, but quite a bit of trailing into the turn. It tightens, but once you're on the inside, you can be already pretty aggressive with the throttle. It widens a bit. There's good amount of grip. And then you'll just have a second apex here, just about when the red and white curb ends. You want to pull the car to the inside and use that tiny bit of extra tarmac there to go into the right hander. Once more, we're coming a little over the crest where the car is going to be light. And then we fall into a banking, which is going to offer a lot of grip. So most of the time you will enter this corner too slow because you're looking at the radius and you're kind of adjusting your speed towards the radius. But as the car kind of goes down into the banking lands, it produces a lot of grip. So we can usually take the corner faster than it appears. The front end bites and then we go around here, bit of exit curb there. The next corner is the, well, I think they call it differently, but it's a YouTube corner where all the videos from this track are from because this is the most difficult weird corner um, on the track pretty much braking is going to be again kind of end of the curb there and same pattern as before the corner just repeats we are shifting down a gear short braking throw the car in two as we're going uphill we lose more speed and the radius the car is doing becomes tighter and tighter and tighter and we really want to stay on the inside for a long time here because again then the banking kind of stops, the elevation kind of stops, we're going over a crest and the car becomes almost infinitely light and you're not able to rotate it anymore. And this is where all the spins come from. The front end loses grip, the car starts on the steering and people just crank the wheel. And at some point, and usually on the curb, when kind of the, the crest is passed and the track becomes more flat again, and now the front end bites. This is usually when the rear end snaps right so just kind of remember this corner is going to be on the steering live with it wait for it to kind of be sort itself out but don't try to prevent it or something okay don't try to force the rear round on throttle because this is going to cause you to snap and lose the rear and end up as just a clip in another Nordschleife youtube video crash compilation which is not the target of this video 
braking marker for the next one, I feel when driving, it is more pronounced. Uh, maybe we can see it from above. Yeah, maybe. Uh, you can just see that the ideal line gets a little more black at some point. Well, maybe from here or so, and then just break a couple meters into where the ideal line is more present again. Or you can find your favorite painting of all these, perhaps that that uh, serve as a as a break marker. For me, uh, it is just kind of where it gets a little bit darker. This corner we kind of similarly already had early on the track as well. It's one of those left-handers followed immediately by a right-hander that's either faster or slower. In this case, it's going to be a slow left-hander followed by an almost non-existent right-hander. But the corner tightens and goes on forever, seemingly. So what we're going to do is stay wide and kind of delay the apex as long as we can. Then here's the tightest point in the corner. We try to build speed and this one is just something you just go straight over. No issues whatsoever with the exit on the left here. Then a bit of flat out section. Then we're coming towards a little bit of a jump. What often helps here is to lift the throttle just right before the car jumps. Don't be too aggressive with it. Makes the landing kind of a bit easier if you're not forcing the car over that. Depends on your setup, okay? How aggressive it is, um, how good it copes with the bumps here. Just take out some speed and it's going to be fine if you have issues here. So you just lift earlier before you're actually jumping and then you have plenty of time to go through this one. Already said earlier, we have a um, kind of, the section is also a repetition of the other where we had the third gear, keep it all the way to the right. Um, and this is kind of the same thing, just uh, fourth gear, keep it all the way to the right. Don't go wide here, just keep it on the inside. There's not going to be too much grip on the outside. And also this left-hander here is just about flat only if you pin the car to the right before. So make sure you clip that late second apex on the right to open up this left hand. Then everything is going to be flat from there for quite a good amount of time. The kind of famous jump down here shouldn't be an issue. Just keep it all the way to the left. Make sure that when you go over the crest, you're not steering too much. And then if you land, be neutral in the steering um, so you're not getting any sudden snaps of the car. Throw it into the right, over the crest. And now I think I lost a bit of time here. I'm really waiting as a reference when the curb on the right appears. So let's slow down a little. There's now the curb visible and this is pretty much my marker when I do some braking. Unfortunately, did a bit too much. He lost the rear, almost sliding a bit around too much. This is going to cost me a bit of time here. And then we swing over to the right-hand side, and you can again see that the tarmac or the ideal line gets a bit darker here, pretty much from here. Maybe you use the end of the curb there. But this, for me, this area here, where it either gets darker in the tarmac or where the curb ends, serves as a good way to... Uh, yep, yeah, it's where you want to start slowing the car down. Then for this corner, we're again aiming for somewhat of a late apex, just failed here with positioning because I had a bit of oversteer and entry into the right-hander. But then it should be easily flat out. We're not coming out of too much of a banking here, so the grip level doesn't change throughout the corner too much, which makes it a bit more predictable. Can easily use the curb, and then for the next braking, we also just stay on the curb here. It's fine. Uh, there's also a brake marker there somewhere. Let's actually roll it back and we'll find it. And I'd say it's again where it gets darker. I think you can see that. Maybe half speed. Now the darker patch comes towards us. Here is where it starts. A couple meters into that is where the breaking point is going to be. Just to gear down, throw it in. Now the car is going to find grip. So what feels initially like too much speed is suddenly going to become just about the right amount of speed. The car gets pulled into the corner from the banking. And immediately as it does so, you need to already floor the throttle again to not lose too much speed and yeah, keep keep bettering your lap time with a good exit here. Don't be don't be scared of jumping out of there. It should be a non-issue. But of course, um that will need some some adapting. Well the last, well almost last corner. Again we can turn in from the curb, at least in the BMW, that's going to work. A bit of brake, bit of a lift. And once you see the car pointing towards the apex and you're like, okay, I'm going to clip that just about. That's when you kind of be ready with the throttle again. Um, and then everything widens and now a blind entry into an almost flat out corner. Maybe you see the guy or the, the, the steward pose, not the steward pose. Black pose on the left. This is when you should have already turned in. 
So it's kind of a, not so much a marker, but a reminder that you are already too late, but you can use that here probably looking at that and then seeing, okay, this is where I should have turned in by now already. And then bring the car to the inside early. That's really important because there's not going to be grip if you turn in late. So turn in early, like we had on other high speed corners on the track. Same thing again, if you feel too fast, just make a bit of a short shift. That's just going to make it that ever flight bit better for the car or easier for the car to rotate. And then we're just flying past the long straight. Still flat, still flat, still flat, still flat, still flat. And maybe now it gets interesting again. Where's going to be the break point for the last corner? Slowing it down, maybe a bit too much, still way to go. Make an aggressive swing to the right here. And then the braking marker is, well, you can use the end of the curb. We're, I think, going to be eventually a tiny bit later. But when we actually hit it, as I said earlier, perfectly at the end of the curb, just kind of perception wise from the cockpit, it seems we are breaking a car length later or something. But if you look from the outside, it's really literally exactly the end of the curb here. Be aggressive. We have ABS on board, shouldn't be an issue. Make sure to cut the track here to have as straight of a braking line as possible, makes the braking more efficient. Maybe a bit of a lift there on the brake to keep in control of the car, keep in charge of the car, being able to place it. And then we're aiming pretty much for this bit of extra curb on the left there. In this case, down to second, maybe third will work for some cars with a shorter gearing. Clip that curb quite a bit, no problem whatsoever. And then the left corner is opening. So again, we don't really have to do a compromise here, which means um, we're not going to do something like this middle of the track and prepare that one. Again, we're just going to take the right hander as if the left hander didn't exist, go wide here and have only the tiniest of turn in or the, yeah, just a bit of a turn in position for the left hander. And that usually means we are going to be fine. Then we are done. And I think the only thing left for me to do is um, go kind of eight minutes back show you the full lap while uh, kind of removing my face and let you watch the entire hot lap without any further comments. I hope you like this. Uh, subscribe to the channel, leave questions in the comments or whatever you want to put there. Make sure to check out popometer.io. Again, there is a free pack for the Notch Live for you to compare. What are you waiting for? Goodbye.